In Philosophy for Spiders, Mackenzie Wark explores the life and work of Kathy Acker, an experimental novelist and Wark's former lover, through the lens of low theory. Wark seeks to uncover the multiplicity of Acker's identity, highlighting various facets of her work and their relevance to trans bodies. The book is divided into two parts, with the first focusing on Wark and Acker's love affair and the second delving into Acker's body of work. The first part of the book intertwines personal experiences with passages from critical works on Acker. Work emphasizes the theme of sex particularly as a trans experience, and the disruptive nature of gender and genre. In the second part, Work shifts the focus from the individual Kathy to the body of Acker's work. They introduce the concept of first, second, and third philosophy as a framework for understanding Acker's writing. First philosophy pertains to the embodied philosophy of the self, while second philosophy explores relationships with others, and third philosophy involves encounters with cultural economic, and urban worlds. Work covers a wide range of themes in these chapters, exploring topics such as time, desire, politics, solitude, masochism, and holes. One of the most compelling aspects of the book is Work's exploration of Acker's gender fluidity in the section on engendering. Within the context of second philosophy, they highlight passages from Acker's work that challenge the gender binary and resonate with contemporary trans perspectives. Work also examines Acker's views on transformational politics and her critique of authority, presenting Acker as a revolutionary figure with relevance to contemporary discussions. However, there is a risk of ventriloquizing Acker and retroactively aligning her with Wark's own arguments, particularly in relation to Wark's previous book Capital is Dead, and its analysis of the digital age. Wark's attempt to position Acker as a herald of post-capitalism may not be entirely convincing, given Acker's limited exposure to the developments of the digital era. A more in-depth analysis of Acker's texts and a closer examination of their connections to Wark's arguments would strengthen these associations.